idea. So, um, like I told you before, let me just make a tutorial for how to do lighting inside of an um, Arnold. So, I'm going to be using some of this reference in here as a guide to kind of Let me just save. Let me just save this file up. So, <clears throat> so I'm just going to try to replicate some of this. Though the character I'm going to be using is not going to be textured, but I'm just going to try and match the <clears throat> and match the lighting as best as I can. So I'm going to be using one of these base mesh. So I'll just select this base mesh, copy. Then I'm going to go to another <coughs> fresh file and just paste this in here. So I got this particular base mark <coughs> from 3D scan store. So let me just bring this out of the group so shift p so you kind of pull this out of that group and delete that group so let's just get this in the center of uh of the grid line let's get this in the center of the grid line doesn't need to be accurately on the grid line though but it's something that it should be fine then let i'm going to bring in a backdrop for this so i have a backdrop i think i have a backdrop on my desktop the backdrop i just drag and drop this in here yeah it's pretty it's pretty big <clears throat> And I just have to where's the front? Okay, I think I may need to rotate the backdrop. And just make sure this should be on minus 90. Okay. Yeah, the bad rock is pretty massive. Maybe I should have shrink it in a bit more. Like so, since something like something like this should be fine, let me just do a quick save for this file. Okay, I think this should be fine. So now, next thing we're going to do is to make sure on our render settings we're using Arnold render for this. Then under the common tab, I think I'll just leave this. Put this at 1K resolution, it should be fine. Then under the preset, I have some default presets I use under user. Let's use low settings in here. So go to download render view. You should, you should, you should kind of use the same setting for let me remove SSL because some business SSS on our model. And that's when you kind of fix the camera settings for this. So let's kind of get a portrait looking camera setup in here so i'll go to, i'll just select the perspective camera from the outliner now come here to the vocal length i'll just put this at an 85 millimeter lens okay this should be fine it should work just fine. Another thing I need to do is kind of set up the render view. So let's just 
and close this for now let's bring out the resolution gate for this so the resolution gate is going to be showing you where or the view that's going to be rendered out in your Arnold render view so everything everything outside this bounding box is not going to be rendered out so this is already this is already a 1000 or a 1000 1024 pixel by 1024 pixel with an height frame for the rend for the rendering so this should be fine let's just get let's just get an angle to this something like so and i'll go to the view i want to create a bookmark for this I want, kind of, I want to kind of save this view. Let me just save this to create new. Just click on new bookmark. I'll name this front. Front cam. Okay, so it's saved you already. So if I just kind of go out of this and I go back to view under bookmark, I click on front camera. You should kind of snap back to the camera angle I kind of saved for this as a bookmark. So that's fine. So another thing to do is kind of give this background a new material, and we need to give it an old material. So select an old AI standard surface. Select the model also. Okay, before we select the model, let me select the backdrop again. Let me just name this to name this to AI backdrop. All right. That's fine. Then select the model. Let's do a delete by type history on this. Then let's give this a new material. AI standard surface. So AI female base all right that's fine we'll just put this here so now let's start with something a bit more basic let's start with this single light setup in here let's start with the single light setup so right of the bat right of the bat you can actually see from the reflection of the eye where the light source is actually coming from you can see from the reflection of the eye, you can see the light is coming from this region around here. So, but I think I would like to let's just put, let's just fix an eyeball in here. Let's get an eyeball in here. Something, an eyeball that will just kind of catch, that will just catch reflection for this. So, let me do this from the front view. Turn off the grid for now. I like to click out. Now just create a sphere in here. Now where did that grow out from? Let's put this out. Now that looks way too large. Let's go to the wireframe for this. Scale this down like so. You just need to have something in there. There's no, there's no need to be completely precise or accurate. We just need to just have something in here. Something like this should be fine. Let's increase 
the subdivision level for that. So let's just put this 40, 40. Just to have something a bit more rounded and a bit smoother. Then we just mirror this to the other side. This is strange. Let's mirror this to the other side. Okay, so cut geometry is turn this off. So we have this perfectly mirrored to the other side now. That's fine. Let's delete history on this. And let's give this a new material also. The reason why I'm doing this is because so when we kind of Start creating our light, which kind of see the reflection of the reflection of the light on the eyeball. Okay. Since we're in here, I'd like to give this a more a more darker material to it, so. Something towards the black. Then the roughness. Yeah, I think it should be fine. I don't. I don't want it to be too rough. Now I'm not adding any metallic property to it because I don't want this to be metallic. I think this should be just fine. Okay. So now let's go out of this. Now turn of the resolution gate. Turn of the resolution gate for now. Now let's create another light. So I come in here. Let's create a and let's create an area light. So I click on this area light. Should be somewhere around here. It looks very small. So let's just scale this out a bit more. Something like you can see how the light is coming from the right hand side in this image. So let's just scale this, bring this out. Like so, so we can easily manually kind of fix this, <coughs> kind of fix this where it should be, or we can just go into panels and we'll click on look through selected. So make sure the area like is actually selected. So look through selected. So we'll just find just find a good angle for this somewhere around here should be fine. Okay. Then we just select the perspective camera again. Go to panels and click on look through selected. That should be fine. So now we have. So you, 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 you always want to make sure this point, this line in here is facing the model because that's like the direction of where your light should be illuminating towards, towards, towards. So let me select the light again. I need to push, go to the top view. And push this back some more, or something like so. Then on this side, I don't think. Okay, on this side view, I would like to shrink this light in like so. Because it, from the reference, you can see how the light is just eliminating like half of this boy's face. So let's just get the lights almost the same. Almost the same size. Let me turn off this grid. Almost the same size with half of the face. Something more or less like this should be fine. Let's see how we use the size for this. So now let's go into our render settings. Let's go back to the bookmark font cam. Turn on the resolution, turn on the resolution gates. Let's go to another render view. 
this is way too big let's just shrink let's shrink this down some more okay now collapse this display yeah look just click on this settings icon to collapse that click on one to one let's scroll out a bit more like so then another thing to keep in mind is that any light you create inside of Anno, there's actually a light there's actually, there's actually a light manager for it so if you go to the Anno's menu here, go to light where is that uh, yes under utilities you just scroll down to light manager so any light you create inside of Anode should be appearing in this light manager so you can see the color of the lights, the light intensity, exposure, also the samples then if you want to kind of enable this, kind of turn this off and on without having to come into the outline and click on Ctrl Shift, Ctrl H rather to hide that you can always enable and disable it in here so let's use a light, so same also we have, this, we have some of the, we have more options in here so for the light samples, let's use two samples for this. Let me just put this in here. I'll collapse it for now. So you can see, you can obviously see in here that the background is completely black. So we can either give our background a full black or completely hide that entirely so but i'm going to show you a more preferable a more better a kind of another option to kind of use and kind of work with instead of anode so let's select the backdrop for now let's make sure you increase the roughness all the way up and give this a full black color then let's hit render on this Now we can't actually see anything in there. Why? Because on the lights, on the light settings, let's turn off normalize. So as soon as you turn off normalize, it's a kind of, it's a kind of, I don't know the technical term to use to explain this though, but it's more or less like ignoring the scale of this, more or less like ignoring the, the, real world scale of this um, of our scene and kind of creating a more broader illumination around the entire scene if I, if, if I should use that word to kind of ex explain it that may not be the correct explanation for it though but once you once you notice that your light your light source is not kind of shining properly on your model you can just turn this off kind of see if that fixes it so now you can see that we have now Obviously, our, mati our model is just too reflective. The model is just too, ref just too reflective. But right off the bat, you can actually see clearly how well we kind of match this same similar similar lighting with the shape of our light. Kind of made the light kind of kind of shrunk the lights, kind of shrunk the width of the light to kind of be more focused on this particular region. So if I kind of go to if I go to the side view. Let me just push this with this here for now. So on the side view, you can see how the shape of the light actually affects actually affects how the light is illuminating the character. You can see in here is more like half of this half of the face, and we have a similar result in here. The reason now we need to kind of fix is let's just make sure this. Let me stop. Let me stop this for now. The color tone of this, the color tone of our character, let's just 
the flex the reflection is just way too much so let's just put this somewhere around here and fire up the render again okay something like this should be fine so we should go back to let's go back to perspective view Let me stop this for now and let's get a closer view on the face like so let's fire up the render again uh, something feels wrong oh yes 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 so keep in mind once this particular object is select, this particular isolate selected is selected. Any particular object you click on is going to be isolated in our and isolated and then rendered out in the render in the render viewport. So let's turn this off. That should bring everything back out now. So be very careful, careful, careful with this. So let's say we get a closer view on this. You can see how we kind of captured the almost a similar light into this except for the fact that this particular light setup this particular light is a bit brighter in nature so we can use the you can now use the you can now you can now use the light manager to kind of kind of increase the intensity of our light in here so you can come in here and then type in let's say a value of four can see how this brightens the entire thing in here let's take this let's have some kind of brighter highlight let's let's use let me just use a value of six instead okay so now if i should let me just collapse this for now if i should go to the side view So before we go to the side view, I like to kind of save this. Let's take a let's take, let's take a snapshot of this. Let's take a snapshot of this. So let me just click on this. Take a snapshot of this around here. Then if I stop this render now, on the side view, if I select the lights and then just scale this out a bit more, like so. Then fire up the render again. You can see how more regions at the back is now being illuminated. So if I can go to the move tool and kind of move, kind of move these lights to the front a bit more, you should find that you find that the light is now illuminating. You can see how this light gradually kind of fades and kind of eliminates, eliminates more of the frontal part of the face. So let's say I keep pushing this now. I keep pushing this. You can see how this part of the face begins to get even brighter, even though the light is not directly facing the facing the model but based on the fact that based on the fact that this light is quite close to the character it will begin to illuminate some part of the face now let's say for example now i kind of let me get let me just put this put this around here then i'll do something in here just to just to illustrate better Let's say I come in here now and I increase this, I crank this up all the way to a value of, let's go all the way to a value of 15. Maybe a bit more. Let's, okay, let's put this to 20. 
though alternatively we can actually use the exposure settings to kind of blow things up so let's use that let's use the exposure settings let's put this at a value of one you can see how blown out this is so now despite the fact that this is kind of blown out the distance from the light the distance between the light and the object kind of creates more illumination depending on how close the light source is to the character or to your model so let's say for example now as bright as this is kind of giving us bright or sharp highlights if i begin to i begin to move the lights further away from the character you begin to notice that the, this actually you begin to notice that the highlight on the character face begins to get faded out you can see you can see how pushing this a distance now away from the character kind of fades out the kind of fades out the light even more kind of almost kind of almost creating similar effect we have in here even though we have the light at a very bright at very bright or high intensity values or brightness or exposure values so keeping in mind also that the distance the light is from the character actually affects how bright the the light should kind of affect your your model so let me stop this for now let me stop this for now and then i would let me just bring this somewhere closer like so I'll fire up our render again okay you can see how this affects you can see how this affects the model so as soon as i keep bringing this even closer we begin to have a bit more brightness around this so i'm sure you guys get the i'm sure you guys get the idea get the idea already so depending on the shape of your lights that's one shape of the lights how distance also of your light and also the value is also using for your light intensity and exposure and the color also that greatly affects the way the light kind of interacts with with your model so that out of the way let's look for okay let's try something now this is more or less like an which is almost more or less like an like an outdoor scene an outdoor out an outdoor scene but with a this looks like there's a kind of soft box around here kind of illuminating the entire kind of illuminating the entire entire model for now i will specifically not want to use azri because i want to kind of talk about the default lights we have inside of um Arnold, most especially the area lights okay. kind of create some mm. studio studio setup to it so this one also is more or less like one light source also because based on the reflection on the eye you can see one light reflection on the eye but it's illuminating more of the face because it's, it has more of a wider shape to it and a smaller shape so let's just let's just stop let's let me just take another snapshot of this again and let's stop this from rendering so now let's adjust our light a bit more so uh which particular view should we use for this now let's use the perspective view so i'm going to try and bring the light a bit closer to the face let me just push this around here Let's check this from the top view. Let's see. Then I'm going to scale this out a bit more, like so. You kind of get this facing the facing the character a bit more. I think an angle like this feels fine. Maybe it should be fine. So now let's go to the front camera and let's do a render again for this now you notice how blown how blown out this is because of the 
intensity of our light or because of the intensity of the light so though this particular part is a bit faded out so i think we need to i need to move the light i need to move the light towards the right side a bit more but before we do that let's make sure the settings for let's take this down let's take all of this down so let me put this back at a value let's put it back at a value of five okay you can see how this takes this down by quite a lot giving us giving us an even better result to it so but the lights i'll need to let's just stop this for now selecting the lights i'm going to shrink the light in a bit more just shrink the light like so and let's do render again for this Maybe even move the light this way. A bit towards a distance like so. It's kind of capture some shadowing around the nose like so. Something more or less like this. You can see how bringing light a bit closer out to the face at an angle kind of illuminates the illuminates more parts of the face but kind of creating some kind of dark shadowing around this part creating some kind of interesting silhouette to it so it's more or less like just going one light at a time one light at a time one light at a, one light at a time until you kind of capture your capture the desired result for the character okay let's say we want to kind of recreate this create a similar effect of this on the model so let's let's try and let's try and recreate something like this let's try and recreate something like so so on this particular character i can see let's look at the eye first to kind of give us an idea of the light source in here so you can see you can see one light more or less or more or less almost at the top of the head you can see another light coming from the right hand coming from the right hand side. So the light over the overhead light is more brighter than the light coming from the right hand side. So you can see this reflection around here coming from the light from the right hand side. Let's try and recreate something similar to this. So I'm going to start by stopping this render. Just take a snapshot of this then we can let's try and mimic what we have in here so let's see uh so the light being selected i'll have to change the shape of the lights into a cylinder in the eight dicks rather because based on the reflection on the eye, you can see this light looking more, more or less like a circular shape, maybe more, like, more or less like an umbrella light kind of. So let's kind of use a circular shape to kind of mimic, mimic that. So this particular light now, let me just make sure I kind of zero the rotation out for this, or zero the rotation out for this. then let's just get this light so we're trying to match trying to use the high eyeball as a guide to kind of match kind of match the reflection kind of match the position of the light so something like so something like this looks fine <coughs> like something like this looks fine okay i don't want to duplicate this light because i noticed that when you duplicate another light it kind of begins to act weird so i want to kind of create a new light so come in here come in here and create another area light scale this up rotate this 90 degrees 
I'll move this this way. Kind of get this at an angle like so. Kind of shrink this all the way like so. Okay. Then on the attribute editor for this light, put this at a sample of two. Turn off normalize. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? What else should we do in here? Um, but for now, I would like to, on the light manager for this, I would like to, I'll make sure this area light like, is turned off. So I'll just disable this for now. I'll leave it disable for now because I just want to see just this, this light how, and see how it's affecting the, affecting our model. Then you're setting in here that I need to talk about. Yeah, not really. Okay. So let's go back to. Let's go back to the bookmark. One's camera. I believe the, if I turn this on, I believe the light will be appearing. Okay, it's not appearing in front. Okay, that's fine. But seeing this now, so the idea now is to kind of use the eye to kind of match where this should be properly. So you can see how this is on top. This particular light is on top, but in our render, we're having this, we're having this directly, we're having this direct, <coughs> we're having this directly on the face. So let's kind of use this kind of match this properly. So I'll stop the render again so I can work a bit faster. So I think, yes, on the front view, you can do a better job on the front view. I'm guessing now we need to even shrink. Let's now need to even shrink, maybe, sh maybe just shrink the lights down a bit more. Then raise this even higher, like so. So, from the side view, you can see that the angle, this pointiness is still direction, the, direct, the directionality of the light is still facing, is still facing, is still facing our model, so that should be fine. So now let's render this again and see if the reflection of the eye should be of the or the reflection of the eye on the eye should be a bit higher. So let's do this again. Okay, seems to be getting close. Yeah, it seems to be getting close. But we should we need to, we need to, we need to kind of push it towards the towards the left hand side a bit more. So Let's push this towards the left hand side a bit more. A bit more. Because the idea that it shouldn't be illuminating the right side of the face way too much. So let's kind of make sure we're kind of see, we're kind of see creating some some shadowing in there. I think somewhere around here should be fine. Something around here looks Fine. I think the reflection. I think we're kind of closely, closely matched the reflection for the eye for the light angle. Maybe just raise this up a bit higher. Okay. Yeah, this looks fine. It's fine. Well, that's fine. So now we can actually now turn on the. So let's turn off this light. This light now. So on the light on our light manager, let's turn off these these lights. Maybe I should rename them so it's much easier to. Let me stop this. Okay. 
okay let me just rename this so now i've named this in here so it's also taking the name in here also ai dix light shape so now let's disable this for now let's just get this disabled then let's enable the second area light we added in here and let's see how that renders out okay now you can see clearly how this renders out Kind of eliminating this other side of the face. Maybe on the model we should add a bit of a reflection on the model. A reflection, let's just get some reflection here, something like this. And the reason I'm turning on this reflection is because so we can kind of match this reflection around this region of the face. So now from the side view. Let's select the light. Let me stop the render for now. Because I'm trying to kind of capture this silhouette of this reflection around here. Ours is not actually showing in the correct place. This is more, it's more or less like showing around here. So let's push this backward a bit more, like so. And let's run this again. Maybe back a bit more again. Should probably stop this. And kind of expand this out a bit more. With the rotation, with the rotation, I'll kind of with this kind of let me just maximize this so you guys can actually see what I'm doing kind of pushing the directionality of the lights towards the back a bit more kind of something like so now let's render let's make sure put this back to bookmark front let's render this out again Okay. Looks like this light should be way back a bit more. And even broader than it is right now. So I select the light again. I push this backward even more. And scale this out some more like so. And let's run this again. Yes. Perfect. So now. You see how I've kind of captured the silhouette of this properly. You can see how the reflection is kind of on the same region, just as this. Same region, just as this. So now, since we are kind of captured this now with the reflection, since we are kind of capture this now with the reflection, we can and the, the light intensity. I think the light intensity should be just fine. So we can go back and turn on. On the light manager we can now enable the we can now enable the other light so let's see how these two work together now this is perfect so now we have something very very similar to except for one thing though okay uh, let's see this looks correct you can also see the we can also see the highlight also we can also see the highlight also on the forehead, same or same, same with what we have in here also. It's also, it's also very similar, except for the fact that maybe, uh, this light should be a bit, should be a bit wider in shape. Should be kind of a bit wider in shape, kind of capture this even properly. And the shadowing, the shadowing around there is a bit lighter, whereas the shadowing on, on ours is a bit it's a bit darker, so let's let's fix that. Let's just do that by increasing the size. Let me stop this. Let's just fix that by increasing the size of the disk lights. And it feels like the disk lights should be yes. Let's increase the size of the disk lights. Something like so.
let's kind of tilt this to be facing the model a bit more so let's fire up our render and let's see you can see how this kind of creates more illumination for the entire thing so now we can actually, you can actually do one of two things like i explained previously we can we can either take down the intensity or move the light further away from the character so i think let's just do the letter let's just move this further away from the character but let's take a snapshot of this face but you can see how you can see how the, the broader reflection the forehead now we can we can now easily well, we have now easily we have kind of matched the broader reflection on the forehead just like we have in here same here in here I kind of match that i think if i move the light further further away from the model it will affect the broader reflection we have around here so better still i'm just going to better still i'm just going to um I'm just going to reduce the intensity of the light instead. So this this light, I'll just put intensity. Let's take down the intensity by by a value of minus one. So let's put this at four. Let's put this at four. Okay. Yes, this looks just about right. Now just one thing is missing, the background. Ah, uh, come on. Cannot dog this. We are not supposed to dog this in. And it's still rendering. Let me just stop the render for now and pull this out. And push this, pull this out. Okay. So now for the background, we can. Now in here we don't really see, I don't really see any rim light around here though. There's no rim light around here. There are no there are no rim lights around here. Around this model. Okay, there's no rim light around this model. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so now for the background, let's make this white. So we can either we can do it we can do it one of two ways. We can either create a light that will kind of blow out the background. Yes. Or we can kind of increase the mat the material of the background to white. So I'm going to be doing two of them because I'm going to kind of show you guys another feature that might be very important for for use in here. So let's just okay. I've stopped the render already. Let's just take a snapshot of this. Take a snapshot snapshot for this snapshot is snapshot actually in there. Okay, okay yeah, it's actually in there. So I would uh okay yes select the back backdrop so select the backdrop then I'll go to the backdrop in here I can uh okay this one this is specular so I'll just take this all the way to white then we can fire up fire up our render again Now this is actually on white box. Let me put increase this weight value. Okay. Mm. It's still not as white as I would want it to be. But that's completely fine though. This is just this is just as an, as an effect of the shadowing coming from the shadowing coming from the lights the lights the light source we have in here because the light source are actually a bit far farther away from the a bit farther let me just let me just show you guys so you guys can actually get a better idea let me just zoom out in here you can see the back the back of this the back of this um can we see it better in here let's see if we can see it better we can see it better in here uh, not really but the idea is that the idea is that let me just stop this render and kind of show you guys why why the background is not fully fully white even though even though we have we have white value in here it's not fully white at the in our render so let me stop this for now and do another snapshot for this so if i go to the perspective view 
Put the perspective view. Now you can see how the light is only affecting more of the regions closer to it, like the model and just a little of this region, a little of this region close to it. And the backdrop is kind of farther away. So the back the backdrop is kind of farther away. That's why the light is not affecting it so much. So the light is not affecting it so much because the light is a bit a distance away from the back of this backdrop so that's why the, so that's why the backdrop is not completely white because the shadow the shadowing coming from this light is kind of affecting the backdrop and kind of creating some kind of gray value out of it so let's see what's going to create mimic the same backdrop in here another way to do it is to create a new light source let's create a new light source so this new light source i would just come to and click on area lights so it's down here let me just scale this out kind of make this make this a bit broader let me just push this to the side so you guys can actually see so this is our light source it's a bit broader so i want this light source to be facing facing more more of the background and yes facing more of the background like so let me just push this down like so this is more of the background okay but another thing i'd like to mention just to show you guys also is that might be important for it might be important to use so let me just name this to ai back back drop so just just kind of shed more light on the previous explanation i did based on the distance of the light from the background I will do something like this. So let's go to the light manager again. Let's turn off this backdrop light. Let's turn it off. Now, turn off this backdrop lights. So I want to kind of make sure this two light, this area light and this disk lights that, that is directly on the model is not having any, is not affecting the backdrop in any way. So to do that, we go to, am I in the correct place? Uh, it should be, uh under windows under rend no not rendering no rendering where is that yes under relationship editor come down to light linking uh let's just click on light centric instead so basically what this means is that it shows you the object that has been affected by the light. So if I just select this disk light, you can see that on the other side of our outliner, everything I lighted is being is being affected is being affected by the light. So let's let's exclude the backdrop. I will I've excluded the, I've excluded the backdrop now. We should do another render of this again. Oh man, I think. Yes, but now you can see how far the light is affecting the regions where this particular this light is affecting. You can see you can see it does not go all the way to the back. So let's make sure we are on our correct front cam. You can see how the backdrop now is now completely black compared to this. Let me zoom this in here. You can see it's completely black compared to compared to this other ref, compared to the previous render we did. So now there are no there there are no light contribution to the backdrop because we kind of exclu excluded that because we kind of excluded that in here in this relationship editor on the light linking for this disk light. So let's select the area this area light also and exclude the back and exclude the backdrop also. But this one shouldn't do much because the facing the facing angle of this area light is is different. It's more or less like facing more of the character itself. More like it's facing more of the character itself. Let me just stop this for now. So stop this for now. So you guys can get a better idea to this. So you can see how this particular area light is facing more of the character than the backdrop. That's why I can't really see any light contribution on the backdrop. Okay, so now on this 
AI backdrop light. We only want the light to be affecting the backdrop only without affecting the model. So, but before we do that, let's just do a render for the entire thing. So, let me make sure it's enabled. I'll make sure samples for this is on two. And kind of blow this out. Let's put this at a value of four. Let's see if, if, it, if it actually affects our render or not. So let's fire up the render. Mm, something feels something feels oddly wrong. Okay, you know what? Let's just do something like let's turn off every other light apart from the backdrop. Oh yes, 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 I remember now. We there's a mistake. Something needs to be turned on. So selecting this selecting let me just close this for now. Selecting the backdrop lights. We collapse this for now. We need to kind of turn on normalize for this. So let's turn off normalize for this. So turn off normalize. Let's fire up the render again. Yes, now we see something in I can see how the now you can actually see how the light is also affecting our model. Because one if it if we kind of turn off not the not this not this go to the light manager and turn off the disk light and the area light that is directly facing the model. Let's turn these two off. You can see how one way one way or another we can still see some kind of reflection around the character based on the lights based on this backdrop lights still kind of affecting the model in a way. The reason why it's affecting the model is because it's kind of shining brightly on the brightly on the backdrop and then the backdrop is kind of bouncing back lights based on global illumination and then affecting the model in a way. So you can see how we can see capture some silhouette around here on the character. So now we're not gonna completely hide that we don't want that to be visible. So on the relationship editor on the light linking select the backdrop and let's turn off we don't want this to affect the character itself. We'll turn that off. We don't we don't we don't want it to be affecting the eyeball also. So let's turn this off. It should only be affecting the it should only be affecting the backdrop. But in a way we were still going to have was in a way we're still going to have reflection on the model because the reflection is not coming from the bounce of light on the backdrop affecting the affecting the model. But at least it's not extremely bright to kind of give us issues. It's not extremely bright. Except if we kind of cut out this lower part of the backdrop and then just kind of create just a, just a single a single flat card, a single flat plane at the at the back. Maybe she will, maybe we should let's do let's do that instead. Let's do that instead. So it shouldn't be just be just talks. Let's just let's let's actually do that. So let, I'm going to hide the backdrop now. I'll stop the render for this. Then I'm going to create I'm just going to create a plane at the back. Just a single plane. So let's create a is yeah, a plane. Just kind of create a plane like this. Something like this. Then make sure we push this back all the way back like so. Then let's make sure we are giving it an anode material to it. Another standard surface. Okay. Then increase all the way to the by weight weight of white. Reflection, let's make this extremely rough. Something like this should be fine. Diffuse roughness, maybe increase this a bit. Okay. So now if we go back to our render. So on this same backdrop, let's make sure every, <coughs> let's make sure everything is working correctly. So let me let's turn this off. We don't need to be affecting the backdrop anymore. Let's just be affecting just the plane. 
just the plane alone so let's go to our render view and fire up the render again we're still getting some illumination from this So I'm just going to just going to keep pushing this back all the way. Uh, come on, let me just stop this for now, and I'll just push this back like so. I'll select the light also and push the lights closer to the plane. I'll select these two and push them a bit further away because I don't want the illumination from the card to kind of affect the model that much. Okay, so I'll select the area lights. And then let's increase the exposure all the way to one. Okay, now we can actually see. Let me just push push this down so we kind of close this down here. Selecting the light again, I'll increase the brightness of the. Or rather, I'll increase the size of the light rather. So you can see how pushing this further away from the model actually kind of creates that. A similar background to this and without any global illumination affecting the model because they're a bit farther away from themselves so the bounce so so once the light kind of bounces off the card is not the distance between the card and the and the model they're a bit far apart so before the light kind of reach this model it gets completely faded, faded out and then we don't have any light contribution on the on the character itself so this is what this is one way of doing it then if we go back in here to our lights to the other lights and we can just turn this back on okay. and we can create a similar effect without having the card kind of bouncing on this or alternatively you can just render this out <laughs> alternatively you can just render this out with an empty background and then bring it into photoshop and then just create a layer at the back and then just fill that layer with white but if you want to kind of do it in here instead of instead of Arnold this is this is more or less this is more or less a more accurate way of doing this of doing this so you can see how this is just showing down here so all we have to do is just to push the two of them down just kind of close this out but the main area of focus is the face so let's kind of go back into our let's go back in here in the camera view and just set the bookmark to front camera for this but you can see how we still see some kind of fadedness, faded like so it's kind of vignetting around here. So it's kind of eliminate that vignetting around there. We can select the lights, scale this out even more, go to the move to and kind of drag this up even higher. So that should kind of eliminate eliminate the vignetting the vignetting we have in at the edge. Okay, so I'm sure you guys get the I'm just trying to show you guys the show you guys the general idea. Kind of manipulate and use light until you have your desired results. I will not be going for something this like this extreme because I feel, based on what we have learned already, you can actually create something similar to this. Or maybe you can, let's say, you can actually create something similar to this. But the idea is that you just kind of play with your light, move the light around, look at the reflection on the eye, kind of get a better idea as to where the light source is kind of reflecting on the eye. But keeping keeping in mind the 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 push the posture of the character if it's not if it's not a real world character or a real actual photography reference kind of used for this so depending on the angle the person is actually facing that will actually affect how the light reflects on the surface so you have to keep that in mind also while moving and adjusting the light intensity of the light and intensity of your the light and intensity of the light also so let me stop this for now. That I'll just, let me just get this like so, and then I'll take a last sn snippet of this snapshot of this. So now the disk light. Let's make sure the disk light is looking something bluish like so. 
I'm not really going for I'm not going to going for something as close close to this because I'm sure you guys get the idea already. So I just want to just, just adjust the lights in here. Close the colors of the lights in here. Let me start with the backdrop. Let's start with the card backdrop we have for this. So I don't know, we can can we actually pick and we can't actually pick color out outside of outside of uh my uh, his side. So then I'm just going to try to eyeball what this color actually looks like. Maybe something around there like so. Maybe. Then the light will obviously be white, but I'm just going to shrink the light down a bit more. And I'm going to change the light into a disk light instead. Then I'm just going to move the lights. I'm just going to move the lights. I'm just I think we can do a better job on the front view. Let me just call. Let me just close. I think I don't need this anymore. Let me just close this. So I think we can reduce this down a bit more, like so. I kind of push this. At an angle like this, maybe something like so. The brightness of the light also shouldn't be extremely bright like it is around here. Maybe put this at a value of three for now. Okay. Then our disk, our disk light, our disk lights. We need to kind of take down the intensity of the disk lights and put this at a value of maybe even at a value of two. Then the color, let's use a more bluish tone to it. So I think the color should be somewhere around here. Maybe something like so, maybe, some maybe something like this. Then our area lights, on the area lights, I'm going to be using temperature for this. So and the area light, I'm going to be using some kind of temperature for this. So use temperature. Let's get this to what towards a warmer color to it. Okay. Uh yes, and this one should be slightly brighter. So let's just put this at the value of three instead. Let's fire up our render. Let's see what we have. Oh, oh, I think we need to need to make sure. Let's render this something like so. So another thing we need to do is just shrink our lights. The disk light, we need to shrink the disk light, the disk light down, down a bit more. But this color, I'm not sure if this is the actual color though. The color feels a bit off. Feels a bit too orangish. And this feels way too reddish. Let me stop this for now. Let's just get something a bit of an orange tone like so. From the side view, we need to kind of bring the lights a bit closer like so. This this, this light we need to kind of shrink down a bit more like so. The color, uh, I'm not too sure about the color though. Yes, then the backdrop. You can see how the backdrop is not looking good enough here so let's just raise this up a bit higher then render this out again now this orange color is not there yet let me push this around here yeah see something a bit more like so but this like this particular color actually feels a bit goldish though it is a bit goldish so it's just a matter of try and error until you kind of capture yeah I think something something like this seems close enough now the backdrop the light for the backdrop let me put this all the way to five
and this backdrop is not it's not eliminating as much as I would want it to. Maybe increase the exposure to let's try a value of five. Now nah, that is blowing that way too high. It's just so difficult for me to just move things around by rendering. Let's just keep rendering until we get get the desired results. I think this I need to push closer. This I need to bring closer to the card. I'll render this out again. Yeah, just eliminating way, way too much. Let's just bring this in. Let's even use the temperature to kind of get this towards towards the bluish tints. But most preferably is much better to kind of do this. Kind of do this inside of Photoshop instead. It's way, it's way more faster. It just takes a lot of time just trying to get the color and match the color right in here and it's not really it's not really worth it it's not really worth it Just a lot, a lot of correcting. Yeah, I think I'll just leave that the way it is. Oh well. So we're back to this instead. So I think I'll need to keep shrinking the. Shrinking the dick slides. Let's shrink this down even more. Nah, that's way too much. Let's just increase the intensity to a value of 5. Let's see. I'm sure you guys get the idea already. Just a matter of placing the light and then making adjustments and keep moving it, moving it until you're on the until you find a very good spot for it. I think I'm going to move the lights somewhere around here like so. Try to render this again. Let's see. Nah, just eliminating too much of the side. Let's try using a quad instead. Let's change the shape to a quad. Let's see what that gives us.
So I'm basically just having fun in here. I'm trying to trying to mimic Mm. My light is no longer working. I don't know why light is no longer. That doesn't seem to be illuminating anything anymore. It's rather odd. Probably a bug or something. Let's close this and open this again and fire up the render again. Ah, blown out. Completely blown out. Let's close this and render out again. So it was, it was actually working before. I don't know why it was just completely blown out. I mean, we just we just had to we just had to reset, kind of close and reset the another render view just to capture it in there. Let's make sure we are looking at this from the perspective view. Huh? It's not really from the perspective view. Yes. Okay, so it's just to kind of find the right balance for it. I think I'm going to try and find the right balance for this. To find the right balance for this. Bring that this out again. Anyways, I'm sure you guys get the idea already, so. I think the idea line is like the most, the most important thing in here. This is just me trying to, trying to get it right. To get this right by force. It has to work. It has to work. Shrink this thing a bit more. Push this around here. Shrink it in a bit more. Okay. Yeah, I think probably why, probably, probably another reason is because this face is kind of angled, so I'm just gonna get shrink my lights even thinner, kind of make sure it's just reflecting on just this surface only. It's gonna get it right. But after you guys get the idea, just continuous corrections and moving things around until you get your desired results. So I'll see you guys in the next next lesson. Bye for now.